just wait a couple of minutes while uh, everyone comes in from the waiting room. Just got some people coming in now. So we're just waiting a few more minutes for everyone to drop in. It takes a while for Zoom to let everyone in. And once everyone's in, I'll uh, hand over to Kia to do a little introduction as to why we're all here. Okay, we'll just wait 30 more seconds for a few more people to come in. It seems that Zoom's still letting people in and then we'll uh, then we'll get cracking. Okay, cool. Akia, if you'd like yep. to do a little introduction and then we'll um we'll begin. Cool. Well, cheers, Will. Um, evening, everyone. Thanks for giving up your Tuesday evening to to speak to myself and Will. And Callum from Snap. Uh, so just a little bit of background about me. My name's Aquila Burgess. I'm the Football Development Manager at London FA. So I've been here for just over two years. Um, so if you've got any questions, I can pop my email in the chat and then just feel free to, to ask me that afterwards. Um, but yeah, the reason why you're all here is, you know, we wanted to try and find a way to make sponsorship as easy as possible. And, you know, throughout my time at London FA, I think funding has been one of the main reasons why clubs need that little bit of support from us so you know we've been in conversations with snap over the past few months and snap have also been working with a lot of our other county fras across um, across country so yeah we thought it's great to, to link up and and to do this partnership to basically give you the opportunity to you know find out how you can access potential funding pots um so yeah that's a little bit about me so i'm just going to hand over to will now um just to explain a little bit more Thanks, Akia. Um, and thanks, everyone, for attending tonight. appreciate you giving up uh, an hour of your evenings to come and listen to us speak. Um, so as Akia says, SNAP is a sponsorship agency. Um, we were founded in 2012, actually within grassroots sport itself. Our founder, Mark, was uh, a volunteer at his local club at the time um, and was finding particular difficulties when going about sponsorship with other members of the committee. Um, generally, when we talk about grassroots sponsorship, there's um, kind of a consensus that um, year on year, you have a bunch of businesses that sponsor you, maybe for a pitch side board or for a front of shirts. And there's quite a lot of churn. So those businesses come in the door as soon as they go out the door. Um, and obviously being a volunteer ourselves, it's it's hard to service all of those relationships because we've got little disposable time. You know, we have a nine to five on the side of our of our passionate um, kind of work within grassroots sport. And we also have limited resources because within grassroots sport, there's not a lot of, um, you know, kind of a support network when going about sponsorship. So SNAP actually was founded um, as a grassroots consultancy to go out on a human resource based model. So going out um, as human beings, picking up the phone and trying to acquire additional sponsors for grassroots clubs. And we were founded within Surrey, so not too far from where all you will be today. Um, and after a while on that model, we found that the problems we're going about sponsorship within grassroots sport were not just defined to Surrey, not just defined to any geographic area or any sport. Is actually the same kind of problems across all, all sport um, with a, throughout the UK. So after a while on the, the human resource based model, we actually moved over to the tech platform, which is obviously why we're here today to talk to you about how Snap works. Um, and we launched that within rugby just because it was a, a market we knew well. Um, and we secured 10% of all UK rugby clubs on the Snap platform. And then sort of at the tail end of 2019, at the start of 2020, we went multi-sport um, and we started on this journey with um, approaching partners, much like London FA um, and other county FAs across the country to be able to you know, kind of bring you the presentations of why we're here tonight. Um, and really the best way for me to kind of get this across is if I'll, I'll show you some clubs that are already using Snap. We've got one on tonight, which is um, not too far from home from all of you, West London Futsal. So they're going to talk a bit about, about the experience uh, with us in a minute. But I think first to kind of conceptualise what Snap is and show you what it looks like, I'll just run through some clubs um, and then I'll do a demo on the platform a little bit later after we've heard from West London Futsal themselves. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen and I'll just begin showing you um, kind of what Snap looks like to the outside world. So I'm just going to minimise this for a second. Hopefully everyone can see my, see my screen at the moment. So I have Big Town FC on my screen. Obviously, they're a completely fictitious club and for the purpose of today, I'll be running the demo with them. And what we're seeing now is what Snap looks like to a potential sponsor to the outside world. So if we had a page on Snap ourselves, 
this is pretty much how it would look. There's a standard format that we have. There's a cover image, which obviously shows kind of all the demographics that play at the club, whether it be kids or adults or women's, whether you play indoor or futsal as well, yeah. showing a whole picture of what we are as a community. And then as I scroll down, you can see we're geolocated on a map. There's three key reasons why we should be sponsored. And these are completely dependent for each club. So they can choose what the, those three key reasons are. And we work with them to make sure that those are as commercial as possible. There's an about us section, including a why sponsor us section, which kind of just drives home those three points and shows all of the sponsors exactly what makes us unique and why they should align with us and get involved with the club. There's a bit about where we're at today and our aspirations. So what potential journey we're going to take a sponsor on and then some history to back up our credibility. I'll just go over the other information as I sort of flick through some profiles that are already on Snaps. If I hop over to here, I'm logged in as a potential sponsor and I'll come on to why that's important in a minute. But I'm just going through some of the clubs that are already on Snap. Some of them you may know, some of them you may have heard of, and then obviously we'll speak to West London Futsal in a minute. So Tooting and Mitcham, they can obviously list that they're an FA Charter Standard Club, as, as would any of you be able to as well. They've got their three key reasons. You can actually see that one of their sponsors has reviewed them. So to show to other sponsors, what a fantastic profile they have. We can see their sponsors are listed as well, their existing sponsors, which kind of decreases the barrier of other sponsors getting involved. I can see everything that they've got available to sponsor. So this is actually Tooting and Mitchell's page and I can see what they've got left in terms of inventory. And if I was a sponsor, I could click through and um, express an interest and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Where I left off with the Big Town page, I got down to here. So we, we can start seeing more information about the club. I can see what their total annual media impressions are across the year see some news about their club, their information, their membership size, their number of pitches, et cetera, number of players, um, you know, what kind of teams do they have? They've got 10 youth teams, two senior teams, and I can see, see all the facilities there at the club. A couple more clubs that we have that you may have heard of that are sort of from the local area. We've got Harefield United, who are in Middlesex. You can see that they've loaded all their sponsors as well. And, and all of the pages look quite similar, but it's a format that we know that works and can help generate additional sponsorship because what we're really doing here is digitizing and doing away with what we may have had at the club in terms of sponsorship brochures. So going about that town and sort of peddling those around, obviously it takes a lot of legwork if we've got it on a live URL and it's interactive, we can change it, we can change our approach, but we can also use this to generate additional traction with sponsors via email and we can use our social sharing tool, which I'll come on to as well. So you can see that all of these pages look pretty similar. We have DTFC, which obviously quite a high, because of DT's YouTube channel, quite a high provenance club that we've just started working with. Their profile, you see, follows a similar kind of format. Um, and then we've got West London Futsal. So rather than me talking about um, West London Futsal and their experience so far on Snap, I'd like to just hand over to Douglas, who's on the call with us tonight, just to kind of give a kind of five minute um, brief summary of his time with Snap so far. Hey, uh, can you hear me? I can. Thanks, Douglas. Um, yeah, so far... Um... It's been a good experience um, using Snap. So, uh, so it's like the first kind of uh, platform we've used in terms of um, getting ourselves out there to get sponsorship. Um, and Will, yourself, you've been quite helpful in giving us tips and ideas on how to increase the probability of getting sponsorship. Um, you've, you've kind of helped us along the way and like helped us change our wording of things slightly to seem, seem more enticing to sponsors. Um, along with giving us uh, tips on using the, the the things on Snap, like the social media um, aspect of things, um, and getting us ready to get ourselves out there more often, more more and more frequently. Cool. And um, I mean, how do you think this is going to help you in going forward with sponsorship at the club? Do you have any ideas in terms of how you're going to use it to try and get in front of additional sponsors within the local area or even nationally? Um, I think it gives us a good online base to refer people to because um, before this I was sending out, as you said, the brochures to people um, and I think having it all online is a good reference point for people to go to because, um, yeah, I think even myself when I get sent emails with things, I tend to either um, not look at the attachment or completely disregard it so if I can just send out a link to people and they can have a look for themselves at their own pace and read it and go back to it and things like that um, it's, it's quite good to see um, and they can also see if other people have 
gone and bought um gone and sponsored us as well which kind of drives up the competition um in certain cases perfect thanks very much douglas so how i'm going to kind of continue tonight is i will run a demo from this big town fc page um and i'll show you all of the kind of features that i think you need to know about the snap platform um i'll show you what it looks like from a sponsor side um and then at the end we'll have question and answer is we do have callum who's manning the chat function tonight callum's one of our account managers at, at snap so um, feel free to put in the as I'm talking and he will be interacting with you along the way. But I'm, I'm going to start the demo now and just kind of show you what, how, it take, how it works to get from A to B on Snap. So from signing up to, to get into a page and kind of the key, um, key functionalities. So if I hop over to the dashboard, this is kind of where clubs live within Snap. So this is where you manage your day-to-day -day, um, sponsorship account on Snap. This is how you talk to sponsors and et cetera. So once you've signed up, this is what you'll see. And one of the first things that pops up that I just think is really good to cover is the access knowledge base. So these are all of the tasks that we need to do to complete, um, having you know, gone from having absolutely nothing on Snap to then having a 100% built profile and it live. So us being able to share our opportunities across social media and speak to sponsors that are on Snap as well. So if I click on any one of these, you'll see that this begins to walk me around Snap quite literally, and it will tell me what I need to do to complete every single one of these tasks with videos and tips and et cetera along the way. That's the kind of technology side of Snap. And we've got a couple of other features to help support you in getting set up, including this AI robot that you can ask a question to and a chat function that comes through to us at Snap. But obviously I've mentioned that Callum's on the call tonight. He's one of our account managers at Snap. Um, obviously Douglas mentioned me, I work at the clubs as well. And we're here as, as human beings to make sure that, you know, no matter what our IT literacy is, we can get set up on Snap and we'll have a profile. Our record at the moment is someone signing up and going live within 90 minutes. And granted, they were a bit of a, a tech whiz, but it really doesn't take that long to get set up on Snap. And if you set up a Facebook page or join the Zoom call tonight, it should be as simple as that. Scrolling down the page into where we actually kind of build Snap. The main area is under this go live bar. So the more we complete within here, the, the further along this gets. And if I click on this edit profile section, it will show you exactly what we need to do to build our profile on Snap. So we have this general tab here, which is kind of all of the information on that public facing page. You can see if I scroll down here, you can see where our about us section is. We can see that we've added in our teams and et cetera. We then have the media page and that's where we put images and we can also embed YouTube and Vimeo links. There's an advanced page, which is kind of like how we're set up as a, as a club and a bit more information that we may want to put in there for the contracting piece, which we'll come on to at the end. But really where we start to build in what we have to sponsor and to show the world you know, what we have available as a club, we come to this section um, and we can create assets and opportunities. An asset in the purpose of Snap being the container in which all sponsorable opportunities sit. So an asset for most football clubs might be that first team shirt, the opportunities within that would be the front of shirt, the left sleeve, the right sleeve, etc. And it's really quite a simple drop down form here. So I can create that first team kit within here. I can add a description. I can classify that asset again within kit, kit and then I can click create and it will pull through down to here where I can add the opportunities underneath it. So if I had just created that first team kit, it would pull down on this list here. And then I could say this one is the front of shirt. I can customize it to start and end dates. Obviously, some clubs want to do their first team kit on a year basis. Some want to do it on a three. If you were looking for sponsorship for a tour, for example, you might want to just do it on a one month basis. So we can fully customize that to make sure that it, it matches our either our invoicing or just matches the, our needs at the club. And depending on an opportunity, if it's an event, then we might want to shorten that time frame. We then assign a cost. Um, and this is fully negotiable on, so it's not fixed. And we can also edit this at a later date. And then we want to build in a description. And to me, the descriptions on Snap are probably the most important um, part of appealing to sponsors, because if we use our social sharing tool, which is a really powerful way that clubs are achieving additional sponsorship, which I'll come on to in a minute, this might be the first thing a potential sponsor sees. So they're scrolling through their Twitter and they see that you have an opportunity available. In here, we need to sell them the club. So we need to put in a tagline about what we do, um, you know, all the kind of encompassing everything about the club. And then the description should really sell the benefits of any sponsor getting involved with our club. So we want to tell them that we've got a broad audience demographic and that we've got youths all the way up to walking football and that we can support them within the local area 
you know, our audience listens to us and trusts us. So if it was, for an example, a local garage and they sponsored us, we want to be able to tell them that we can make sure that a proportion of our members will go and get their MOT there this year and all of those kind of things that a sponsor wants to hear. So within this description, we have to tell them exactly why they should get involved with the club and what the benefits would be. We then choose an image which is associated. So for this, I'd obviously just choose the front of shirt or someone playing. And then when I click create, this will pull through into our opportunity management system. And you can see this is a demo profile. So we've just got some stock images in there, but I have available my front of shirt, my left sleeve, my right sleeve, et cetera. So I might've come onto Snap, used that access knowledge base and, and got a long way of the way, then spoken to my account manager and put some assets and opportunities within there. And the next step would then be to kind of get those opportunities out there. So we always recommend that you go back to your existing sponsors first and you go to your members and you say, look, we know you already support us or as a member, you might have a local, biz a local business or a small business that you run or you, know, you even work for a company that you think would be perfect to sponsor the club. Put your Snap page in front of them and you never know, one of your sponsors might uh, give you some additional sponsorship revenue and one of your members might just decide to sponsor because we put it in front of them in a really professional and streamlined way. But I've kind of mentioned the social sharing tool before, and this is one of the ways that our clubs are actually being really prolific in securing new sponsorship. So the social sharing tool is a bit like a Hootsuite or a Buffer, if any of you use, use those in your nine to fives. Um, so it's a social media aggregator. It will post across Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter all at once. So simultaneously, or we can select the individual channels that we want to post to. So I'm going to post to Twitter tonight and just show you a short little demo. So we obviously have this um, box here, which just announces the fact we're on Snap sponsorship. And some clubs do that. It's a nice way to kind of kick off the conversation on their social channels about the fact that they've revamped how they're doing sponsorship at the club. But really, the two best ways that our clubs are leveraging this is the ability to promote opportunities. So if I come down here, you can see that anything that I've listed on Snap as an opportunity is now on a list for me to click on. So I could scroll through here. I could make this to 25 and look at all of the opportunities I have available. And I can then promote individual opportunities to my Twitter, giving me the ability to either target specific industries or you know, target people by budget. So if it's a match ball sponsorship, I might be looking for some last minute deals or some smaller local businesses that would be able to afford that. When I'm looking at stuff that's you know a thousand pounds, I might want to target the bigger businesses in the area because I know they might have that available budget. But if I clicked this sort of right sleeve of shirt opportunity here, it changes the suggested text for me. One of the things that we found when we were working within rugby was that Talking about sponsorship might be a barrier for a lot of volunteers that don't have any sales experience within their day jobs. So we've written some text that we think helps communicate the opportunities at the club quite effectively. We don't have to use it. We can write our own messaging within this box. But if we use that suggested text, you'll see it pulls through over to here. So I can see a preview of that, that tweet that I'm putting out. This one says that Big Town FC have the following amazing sponsorship opportunity available. Um, this would pull through where it says opportunity name. It would say right sleeve of shirt. Where it says check it out here that will pull through a shortened link so the sponsor will click through to that opportunity page, which is why those opportunity descriptions are really important because it could be someone who's never heard of us who just stumbled across this on Twitter. So we need to really sell in those descriptions. I can change this. I don't, I don't have to keep that exactly the same. I can also edit it. And then I come down here and I can post this. So if I click this now, this will post straight out to my Twitter channel. And obviously if I had Facebook and LinkedIn clicked as well, it would, it would post across all of those simultaneously. But one of the things I can also do with a social sharing tool, like a Hootsuite or Buffer, is I can schedule posts. And one really key way that our clubs are doing that is actually to thank their existing sponsors. This was another piece of functionality that we built in when we were working rugby. Clubs wanted a way to say thanks to their existing sponsors and keep those happy because, you know, a, a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. If we can keep those sponsors happy and, and paying us every single year, then we don't have to worry about particularly acquiring such a hard, large amount of additional revenue from sponsors. And one of the ways that they wanted to do that was a really streamlined way of just saying, I want to thank all of my sponsors across social media through Snap, through your tool. So we built this. And if I click, for example, this Zetra Bakery, uh, they're a bakery that sponsors Big Town FC. And I use this suggested text. You can see that's changed. So it now says that Big Town FC are proud to partner with following sponsors. It pulls through their social media handle for that channel. So this one would say at Zetra Bakery. And then it would um, pull through a link to their social media as well. We can change that again. So we don't have to use that suggested text. And as I mentioned earlier, the best way that this has really been used is with the scheduling tool. So rather than me just sitting here and posting these out, which I could arguably do from Twitter as well, although it wouldn't pull through their handle and their, their logo at the same time, I can post this 
at multiple intervals. So I could say that I want this particular tweet to go out potentially with power games every Saturday. So let's say if our kickoff's at 12 o'clock, we want this to go out at 11.30 on a reoccurring basis from now until uh, 2022, because they've signed a, a one-year deal with us. And I want this to go out every Saturday at 11.30 a.m., so half an hour before kickoff. I can then do that same process for every single one of my sponsors at the club. And I've then thanked every single one of my sponsors at potentially half an hour intervals up until the first team kickoff every week for the next year or for however long I set it. And therefore, for people like us who are grassroots sport volunteers, we we can go about you know the day-to-day running of the club on a Saturday. We can man the car park. We can make sure that the under eights have those um, half oranges at half time. We can make sure that you know everyone's got water and the first aiders are, are looked after and all those kind of things that we actually want to do on the day. Posting to social media about our sponsors is probably something we put on the back burner. And arguably, you know, we shouldn't. But at the same time, we've got far more important things that need to be done on a Saturday. If we can come on here and in 20 minutes kind of thank all of our sponsors for the season, it's one of those jobs off our backs for the next 12 months. You can see it's pulled down here. So if I start scrolling through, we can see that every Saturday I've got that Zetra Bakery thanked at 11.30. I can change the scheduling. You know, if we've got a game on a Sunday rather than a Saturday, I can change that. Or what I can do is I can remove that altogether. So that sponsorship relationship might have ended and I can remove that from my calendar so it doesn't keep going out across my Twitter. If I just hop over to Twitter now, you can see I'm logged in as this big town FC. And if I refresh the page, you'll see that that tweet went out three minutes ago about that right sleeve of shirt opportunity. Obviously, we just use stock images, so that's what it would look like. But if you've got a playing image, that's pulled through a playing image of someone at your club. So I might be a potential sponsor and I might have come across that on Twitter. And sponsors can express interest whether they're logged in on snap or not so it's totally free for sponsors to sign up to snap and we say invite all your existing sponsors because it will make those like their lives easier they have this side of the functionality so they can sort of search for other opportunities that might help them or they can allocate a budget and they can see all of the deals that they might already have with you within here sign the tasks and make sure they get they can stay on top of the deal and i'll come on to what that looks like on your side again in a minute once we've done a deal but Regardless of them being logged in on SAP or not, they can still express an interest. So if they came across that tweet, they clicked on it, they could basically leave their details and do a kind of a, a quick checkout method. That doesn't mean they necessarily have to buy the opportunity. It just says they're expressing an interest at the price that you've given. Here are, the, here are their details. Contact them off of SAP. If they were logged into SAP, obviously they'd have all this functionality. I'm just going to kind of cheat a bit because I already know that Big Town FC exists. So rather than using the full functionality of the search function, which works a bit like Auto Trader, so rather than searching for a uh, six speed four by four, I can search for a football club within London that has you know, over half a million uh, media impressions every year and it will pull up all the results that match. I'm just going to search for Big Town FC because they know they exist and I'm, I'm running a demo with them tonight. So if I scroll down here, you can see all of their opportunities that are available. And if I click that show map, it will just show me where they are. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop through to that right sleeve of the shirt opportunity. So the one I just shared across social media. So if I had clicked on that from social media as well, and I hadn't come through this way, I would see this page and I would see whatever image is associated with that. I can come through to the club's page to read more about them. If I was connected with them. So if I had already sent a connection request, which of course I have because this is a demo account, I'd see the telephone numbers. If not, I could just click that button that would be there and say, I want to talk to you about this sponsorship opportunity. But what we can also do through Snap is actually have a negotiation. So here I can see that um, they've got the right sleeve of the shirt opportunity. The cost of the sponsorship is £400 and it's worn at all home and away games. Um, and I can also see the additional benefits that are included in this opportunity. If I go back, it's the same for any single one of these opportunities. So it's the same for the left sleeve of the shirt. And the button at the bottom of there says express interest. So if I'm a sponsor, I'm this Zetra Bakery, I've seen this, this opportunity, I come down here. And I can send the club a message. I can say, hey, I'm interested. Now, obviously, they probably send you something a bit more in depth than that. But we'll send that over. And once that's gone, if I go over back over to where I'm logged in as the club, so on my other browser, and I come up to my notifications on Big Town FC, someone has been looking at one of my opportunities and expressed uh, interest 11 seconds ago. If I click through on that, it then takes me to kind of the flip side of that messaging screen. At this moment in time, we're not in a sort of open line of communication because that could have been, rather than a bakery, it could have been a cigarette or an alcohol brand who wanted to sponsor our under eight shirts team, and we're obviously going to turn those people away. However, this is probably, you know, as I can see, it's a bakery, it's someone that I want to entertain. So as soon as I reply, we then have an open line of communication where we can discuss 
what that sponsor is looking to get out of the relationship. You know, for a bakery, they're probably going to want to sell cakes. So how can we help them do that? They might have a look through our additional opportunities and find something that's of interest and they can request that as well. So we can start to build a package and I can also suggest stuff. So if I found out that they just want to sell cakes um, and I know that this flag opportunity is actually in front of all of the under eights, under nines and under 10 parents. So a great age for people buying cakes for birthday parties. I can suggest that that's something that they might want to think about sponsoring as well. And we can add that into this deal. So as I said, we're starting to build a package that kind of works for that potential sponsor. I can then change the price of those opportunities in the deal. So I can say, actually, because you've put that um, flag opportunity within the deal as well, I'm going to decrease the left sleeve shirt opportunity to 300 pounds and I can update that. And you can see that pulls through into this chat function again. So it's constantly telling the sponsor exactly what we're doing. And you can see this red button keeps flagging up saying you've got no activations. Please remember to add one. So an activation is something that we need to do to get this opportunity, this, this sponsorship off the ground. Obviously, if we go to a football match at Wembley, they might be you know, throwing stuff into the crowd. They might be handing out samples, all of those kind of things. For us at the club, it might be something quite simple as to get that sponsor's logo on our flags. And how do we get from having nothing to do with that sponsor to then having to make sure that we get their logo on the flag? We can add those activations within here and we can start to assign tasks so that the committee on our side or people at the club and the sponsor does everything that they need to do to make sure that we we get that over the line and we do we do everything that we said that we've done in this negotiation so if i said i need um a sponsor's logo on the flags that i've just put into the deal oh we've got my caps lock on sponsor's logo on the flags so if, let's say that the printer's charged us 200 pounds for that they've said that will be a, a 200 pound charge we can then add all the tasks underneath here that would need to happen to make sure that that logo goes on the flag. So one of those might be that we need, first of all, we need to get the sponsor's logo off them. So sponsor to send their logo. I've already put that in because I've done so many demos on this account. And we can select the owner of that as the sponsor. They need to send us the, um, they need to send us that logo. So I'm going to click the Zetra Bakery. I'm going to select the status of that as pending and I'll give them a deadline of the 8th of July and I'll add that to the deal. The next thing that would need to happen is, well, we'd need to make sure that we get our flags to the printer, the ones that we already have that we don't have a logo on. So uh, club to take flags to the printer. We'll select the owner of that, someone as a club. So John Smith, Big Town FC, who's going to do that for us. And we can select the status of that as pending as well. And the deadline of that, we set that as the 8th of July. So let's make sure that those flags get there on the same day so we'll set as the 8th of july as well and then the final thing we don't want to take that 200 pound cost on to us at the club when the sponsor is only paying us i think it was something like 350 quid so we need the sponsor to pay that printer it's an activation cost it's something they're going to cover um to be a part of our club so we'll say the sponsor to pay the printer and we're going to assign that again to the sponsor rather than someone at the club it's a pending and they need to do that probably up front so we'll do it all on the same day just for the sake of ease but we can customize that date where whatever we want it to be we add that in and we return to the deal and you'll see it's put that in the chat function so i've told the sponsor that's what we're going to do they can suggest some ideas on their side as well so they get a very similar looking page to you and they can just suggest oh you know as i want to take that i want to bring down a couple of cakes for everyone to try next sunday and they can say that's an activation once we've got the rights in the deal and we've got those activations that we need to do we're probably Pretty happy with the deal at this point but we need to talk about how we can how they're going to pay us so obviously a lot of businesses have been hit quite hard during the last year they might not have the cash to pay you up front at the moment and we've of course put functionality in to kind of change that so we can either do it annually biannually monthly quarterly or up front let's say we'll do this quarterly and we'll update continues to tell the sponsor that i've done that so you can see it's just pulled through in that chat function deal payment changed to quarterly and then the final thing that we come on to is the contracting. So I mentioned if we put some additional information in there, it helps with the contracting piece. Well, there's three ways that we can contract on Snap. We have the handshake agreement. We have the pre-existing um, sponsor agreement, which is actually just a PDF upload. So either you or the sponsor themselves, if they're dictating the terms, they can upload a contract. But one of the ways that we thought we try and help grassroots sport additionally just become more professional with sponsorship is actually to provide a template contract. So if I go through to preview the deal that I've selected the, the snap contract now, this, what is pulling up now is what happens to pretty much any deal that goes through snap. And most of our clubs use this. You can see that it puts this 
into a template agreement with T's and C's, which are the same for any deal. It's very vanilla, very black and white, not too much legal jargon within there. We've got dotted lines for us to sign on. And then where this gets really quite clever is we've put in the contact details for both parties, the rights that are within the deal, the uh, payment schedule. So we've broken that down into quarterly. We've got the activations and how many tasks there are underneath those. And then the chat transcript has been timestamped. So we're really accountable on both us and the sponsor for what we've said during that negotiation period. Now, I'm not going to click agree the deal just because I'm logged in as both. So it'll start sending notifications everywhere, pinging, making a load of noises and sending me emails as well. But what happens if I did click agree the deal? It would send an email to the sponsor and send an email to us. It would then load the tasks within our task management system, which I'm just about to show you, and then put those activations as tasks as well to make sure that we're kept up to date and we, we stay on track to get that activation over the line. What I'm talking about when I refer to the task management system is if I come over to that dashboard, and this will be within here anyway, and I'll explain why in a second. If I scroll down, so I only got to the social sharing tool. Below the social sharing tool, we have deals and deals requiring our attention. So deals is anything historically that's been done on Snap. So anything that we've, we've ever done, um, and we can actually upload our pre-existing sponsors. So I'll show you how you do that in a minute when we come, come to the end. But that's anything that we've done previously on, on Snap. And if I click through there, you can see that Zetra Bakery have, have nine deals with us. And this one, the one that I was just doing, this is why it's in there, is within negotiation. So I can go back over to the negotiation here and carry it on, or I can view the contract that we've pulled through together as well. Once I'd agreed that deal, it would pull through into this deals requiring my attention section. And deals requiring my attention is anything urgent. So this kind of acts a bit like a CRM. It would say to us, you need to take that sponsor's logo to the, or you need to get, the sponsor to send their logo to that printer and you need to take your flags there and by the way that sponsor needs to pay them and it would pull through all within this deals requiring our attention give us the deadlines and it would keep pinging us a notification to say have you done that yet it would also come through once we'd signed that deal so once we we clicked agreed all of those tasks would pull through into this task management system and one of the things we can do on snap is rather than just have one person managing all of our sponsorships we can have as many people of the committee as we want for no additional charge. So we can have 10 members of the committee on, on Snap. We can all assign them different tasks and they can come onto this task management system and say, yes, I've taken those flags to the printer or yes, I've got the artwork off the sponsor. So we can constantly make sure that the right people are doing the right jobs to make sure that sponsorship carries out smoothly at the club. A couple of other things that I'll show you just because I'm down here is the messages section. That's actually where all the messages come through from the sponsors. So obviously they come through the notifications at the top, but they're also within here. And then we can see all of our assets and opportunities at the touch of a button on the dashboard as well to go through and edit them. So I've kind of shown you how we, we build a profile on Snap and then how we do a negotiation with a sponsor and then how the task management system works. And obviously I've mentioned that you can have unlimited amounts of the, the committee on there as well. One thing that I haven't shown you and I've kind of mentioned it tonight is adding a pre-existing sponsor. So we don't want Snap to just purely be a place for you to get new sponsors from, start sharing across social media. We also want it to make you, your lives easier when you're managing your existing relationships. So of course you can upload those within Snap. And if I come in here, I can click create a pre-existing sponsor and I select my sponsor here and it will load our list. And there's currently around 3000 sponsors on Snap. Most of those have come from clubs using Snap and they've invited their sponsors and they've joined them on Snap to make their lives a bit easier when using it. And as I've said, it's free for sponsors. It's taking a bit of time. But if it was someone like the local butcher that I might have a sponsor or the, the local garage that I may have a sponsor as well, you can see they're probably not going to be on this list because they're not on Snap. To actually just create them for our management, we just put in their contact details to the person that we actually liaise with on a day-to-day -day basis. We put in their um, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter URLs and handles, and that's for the social sharing tool. So that means that we can start sharing and tagging them in um, automatically. We upload their logo just for those tweets as well. And we can invite them to Snap. It's not a prerequisite, but we can invite them to say, come join us. This might make your life a bit easier when you're dealing with us in terms of sponsorship. We don't have to. Um, we upload their logo and then we create the sponsor. Then we can select the contract type. So if we've got one with them, we can actually click and we can upload that agreement. So we can put a PDF in there. We can set our payment schedule. We can select the assets and opportunities that they've sponsored. So if it's our left sleeve sponsor, we just build that asset and opportunity and then put it in with, within a deal. And then we can even add the activations that we've got over the next year. So if we know that every December that um, that cake sponsor comes down and brings a cake down so that we all know to go to them for our Christmas puddings and cakes and et cetera, then we can add that in, even if they were a pre-existing sponsor way before we'd even heard of Snap. 
So we really want this to be a tool that you use just completely for your sponsorship and not just one that you use to get um, additional sponsorship. And of course it can be used for that using the social sharing tool, et cetera. The final thing that I want to show you is in the My Account section. And we actually have a sponsorship report. Again, this has been designed end to end to make sponsorship easier for grassroots volunteers. And one of the things that kept coming up was putting together a sponsorship report for that committee meeting. It's 7 p.m. in the evening. I've just finished my nine to five and I'm getting on a train and I've completely forgotten to put together the sponsorship report and tell everyone at the committee where we're at. Well, this sponsorship report actually just pulls through all the data, whether it be pre-existing or anything new that we do through SNAP. Um, and I can export all of that to a PDF or an Excel file um, and then just email it around the committee. Or what I can do is actually be really quite granular so I can start to filter down who my sponsors are. I can search via the start and end date. I can search by the deal price, the opportunities, you know, any number of criteria and then export it by PDF or Excel. So if I was only wanting to talk about one deal that night, I could find that one deal and export it via PDF and Excel. So I'm just going to stop uh, sharing my screen for now. Um, Callum, I can see that the chat function has been popping off tonight. So I just wondered if uh, you'd like to, you know, just kind of put some of those questions towards me that have come up repeatedly. Yeah, sure. Um, we had one from Mashoud and then a couple of, of messaged me directly. So I think first one, if, if we cover that one that was asked was, um, do we provide a, a guide for the cost of different sponsorships? Like how, how do you price your opportunities? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. It's actually one that I answered today for one of our clubs. So simple answer is that we don't generally provide advice on, on how to cost up sponsorship. And the reason for that is there are so many complexities involved in how we get to a sponsorship price at our club. Um, I won't bore you with all of the details, but we have to take into account uh, social demographics, who our members are, the value of them to a potential sponsor. And that would differ depending on what the industry is. Um, we have to take into size all of the assets and what they would cost elsewhere. So if I went and bought a billboard in central London versus buying a pitch side board at your club, what are the cost differences? Um, and then there's also stuff like gearing ratio, which is a bit finger in the air. So kind of how we make sure that that's an affordable product for the sponsors. But then it's also comes down to, um, you know, something is only worth what someone will pay for it. And that's true for sponsorship as well. So it's very much quite a, a, it's quite a fluctuating industry. Um, and that's evident in, in premiership football as well. So you can see that, you know, Manchester United can charge 64 million for Chevrolet to be their front of shirt sponsor. And when Chevrolet pull out, they can't even sell their next front of shirt sponsor for half that. So they, you know, they're then looking at like 30 million for a new front of shirt sponsor. So it's a very, um, it's very liquid. Um, and for that reason, it's quite hard for us to say that a football club in London's front of shirt should be around this, whereas a football club in Newcastle's front of shirt should be around this. What I would say is that, and I, this was the advice that I gave to the club today, is to not be afraid to kind of undervalue yourselves, particularly within this market, um, because we've just had COVID and businesses have been hit hard. So the real benefit is how can you get those sponsors on board and make sure it's affordable for them and then work with them year on year. So as I said, we want to, once we've got a sponsor, we want to retain them. Um, and if we're showing them that we're giving them value, so if they know that our members are going and purchasing from them, and that can be as simple as making sure that you get a 5% discount for every single one of your members on their products or service. So every time that person is coming in the shop or buying online, they're referencing your club. That's going to show the sponsor that you're delivering them that value year on year. And then they will probably carry on retur returning and renewing with you every single year to make sure that they're getting that additional benefit from your members. So I know that's kind of a bit of a backwards answer in the fact that really we don't kind of give that advice, but what you could do, and this is something that we do at top end of sponsorship as well, is just kind of price yourself in line with your competitors. So look at what other clubs are charging, look at what, you know, other, not just within football, but other local rugby clubs and cricket clubs are charging, and then kind of be a little bit finger in the air and, and pull out an, a number that you think is appropriate for your front of shirt or your pitch side board, et cetera. What else do we have, Callum? Okay, uh, next one. Let me just go into my direct ones. Um, so, yeah, you mentioned about demonstrating um, when you were looking at assets and opportunities creation. You mentioned about um, like how you can demonstrate to a potential sponsor like the, the value that you can provide and a percentage of members using... Um, Sorry, spending money at that business. Uh, yeah. Have you got any examples of that, please? 
So have I got any, I'm assuming the question is, have I got any examples of how do we demonstrate value to sponsors? Sure, um, yeah, so I actually just made a resource um, that's going to be uploaded to Snap. So it's not quite live at the moment, but one of those things that, um, and I kind of alluded to it then, was when we are going about a new sponsorship, we might want to, number one, speak to our members and to speak to that potential sponsor beforehand. So I've just created a resource which is gonna be uploaded into our library. So if I share my screen, this won't show you the exact resource that I'm talking about, but it will show you that up in this section, in the My Account section, we have a library, which is where we kind of put um, new articles and et cetera, you know, how to, how to register, how to go live, et cetera, things like that. And then if I actually go across to um, our news articles, um, we can see, sorry, not the news articles on here, the news articles on the Snap website. We can see that we kind of upload with value add all the time. So we keep putting in things um, that might help you, you know, other people's successes and how they went about them. And um, there are some really good examples of the social sharing tool within here as well. So this, I'm kind of getting a little bit off track, but within here, we can see that we, we've kind of added a lot of stuff to help you out. One of those things that I've been uh, working on is a questionnaire template, one that we can ask our members. So we can say, have you heard of this sponsor before that's coming on at the club? Have you thought about purchasing from them? Uh, what are your thoughts and feelings about this potential sponsor beforehand? And then we can ask them the same questions in 12 months time and show that sponsor what's changed. So we can say, actually, we went from 0% of our members ever hearing about you to 99% of all our members hearing about you, showing that we've increased your brand awareness within our club. Or they never thought about purchasing from you before but i've said that 13 of my members have now purchased a product from you so we know that we've de delivered you some value in terms of when we're talking about building assets and opportunities i'm you kind of said that i spoke about it there what we have to do within that section is just show what the benefits are so we have to say that we are a trusted voice within football or a trusted voice within our community in london and therefore we can generate additional revenue for you or we can generate brand awareness or whatever their objectives might be, but generally they'll probably be along the line of sales. Um, and I've kind of said earlier, an example of that is a local garage. And I'll just kind of pull up this, um, this tweet example in front of you before. And this was how one of our clubs got in across the fact that they were a valuable kind of proposition to them. And they did this, they built an opportunity and they did obviously explain this in the About Us section, but they also did it using the social sharing tool. So they went a step further than just sharing out their opportunities. And they kind of did that hyper-targeted stuff that I was talking about earlier. So they shared an opportunity, which was the squad water bottles from the sharing tool. Then they tagged in and they said, local garages make great benefits, um, great partners and the benefit from the value we can offer. Imagine the increase in your revenue from our club members getting their MOTs and services through your business. So they really candidly and really directly explained what the opportunity would be for that business. And obviously we couldn't be that targeted in about our section or a description of the opportunity. But what we could do is say something along those lines. So imagine the increase in revenue to your business from our members coming to you for whatever product or service that you offer. And actually for this particular club, this worked really well. So they ended up doing this deal on the same day. You can see timestamp on the same day. Um, they con contacted us then through email and they got that deal over the line. They actually went on to do 13 deals with the same methodology um, in one week. And you can see that this was all within the last lockdown. So they did really, really well using that method. And that's just coming back to the point that sponsorship is all about showing that we have a value and that value is our members. And we as a club can kind of influence those members and say that so-and-so's cakes are amazing or this garage is giving you 5% discount on your MOT and they're a sponsor of the club. So please go to them for your MOTs and services. And quite quickly, you'll see that that sponsor is happy with the value that you're giving to them. They will renew. And if we're using something like Snap to make sure that we can manage that relationship effectively, then they'll keep coming back year on year. Thanks. So um, I've got three more, actually. Uh, one's just come up, which we can sort of tie in as well. Um, so basically one of them, um, April's asked about Obviously, like we, um, she's asked about using it for other aspects, not just clubs. Uh, like, can leagues use it? Yeah. Um, if you could sort of just touched on like the agnostic nature of, of Snap. Yeah, cool. So, um, a lot of the language that I would have used tonight is about clubs, and that's just because most of the people that use this, as you can imagine, there are two hundred fifteen thousand grassroots sports clubs in the UK. So, a lot of the people on Snap are clubs. But yes, so leagues can definitely use this. Teams can use this. Individuals can use this. It's a platform for sponsorship and it is, as Callum says, agnostic of who we are. So a league, you can, of course, show what your demographic is with with a team. You can show what your demographic is. 
And with an individual, you can show that you're a responsible property and you have an audience maybe across social media or with the teams that you play in or within the league that you play in. So whoever we are, we can have a snap page and we can show what our opportunities are. Think of snap as more of a vehicle of just getting you from, you know, having ideas dotted all about the place, Excel spreadsheets, black books, you know, you might have just scribbled down a sponsorship package on word or something like that before putting it all in one place and then just having it as more of a kind of professional way of getting it in front of people, either, either by social media or by having a URL. So you have your snap page and you can say, you know, if I'm a league, I can say, here's our sponsorship for the league for the year. Have a look at our page. It'll tell you more about who we are and how we can help your business. Individuals exactly the same. I'm this person. I compete within football. I play within this league and I have this large an audience across social media and here are my sponsorship opportunities. And that's exactly how we should be using a snap, just using it as a really kind of professional and streamlined way of getting our opportunities in front of sponsors. Brilliant. And then second to last, uh, this question was regarding a specific opportunity to sponsor uh, the cost of pitch hire, which obviously is, is a really big concern for, for grassroots football clubs. Yep. Um, so maybe if you could answer that question, but then, then sort of touch on um the different things that can be opportunities for for a football club as well yeah cool so pitch hire um is an interesting one because pitch hire means that you don't own the site itself so we can be clever here and we can say we'll bring um pop-up banners which are really easy to get hold of but you have pop-up banners with that sponsor's branding on the benefit of that is your pitch hire will either you'll use the same one at all times so you, you always use the same field and therefore you can say it's this area and I know that obviously our team's there and the competitors team is there but it's within a, a busy park and therefore loads of people will be seeing your branding and you can come down as the sponsor and maybe have a stall there and talk to us and the competitors but then also people in the, in the park or, or that kind of thing um, but with that pitch side board the pop-up banner that can obviously be moved around so if you're renting different fields which I know is the case within central London you might not use the same venue every single week you'll rent a different pitch week by week you'll then have the ability to expose that business to different audiences every single week with a, a banner that moves with you and still shows their support and will obviously be in the photos the, the aftermatch photos and etc so we, how we want to position that is rather than it being I need you as a sponsor to cover the cost of the field. There's no inherent benefit of that to a business. We need to glam that up to be, as, um, as a club, I'm offering your business the opportunity to sponsor a pop-up banner on the side of our field, which will expose you to an audience of our players, the competitors, and then anyone else that's in the park. And we play within this area, this area, this area, this area, therefore giving you exposed to a large um, demographic of people all across London, and we can guarantee that on some of our games, you can come down and interact with us players and et cetera. Um, you can bring one of your business development team or something to talk about what your business does um, at half time or um, to everyone watching the match. When we glam it up like that, it goes from us saying, I need you to help me cover my costs and I might give you a benefit to all of the benefits are for you. And I want to charge you something for that, but you're going to get an amazing deal out of all of this. And I'm going to expose you to all of those people and you can come along and watch our games and, and help you know, promote your business to our membership network and the competitors as well. Um, and therefore we cover our costs. A business sees a fantastic opportunity. And if we can deliver on that, then we can keep them year on year. It's just all about how we word things um, when it comes to sponsorship. We have to be really careful not to say that we need your help and then that's it. It needs to be more led with, we want to help your business through our audience and through the people, the members at our club and through football to make sure that you get a business return. And this is how I'm going to help you do it. And it's with a pitch side board that moves around London. Well, thanks. So uh, last question from me. And then uh, we've also got a hand up after that from Carla Parker, if you can uh, cool. just yeah, no be able to, uh, to speak. Um, so last one from me is, what are the costs of snap and what's the commission that we we do we charge commission cool um so costs of snap um i'll start out with if you didn't come through london fa so if you just came off the street and you came to snap um snap would cost you nine pounds per calendar month um and the reason we priced it at nine pounds per calendar month is because we found um, a piece of data from the sport recreation alliance which found that the average cost of being an adult participating member so the subs that we pay to be a member of a club are on average £9 a month or £108 a year. 
Now, within that price, there is no commission. So we don't take a commission on sponsorship secured or pre-existing sponsorship. There's no commission. And we don't actually handle the payments. So if you saw when I did the demo, it was all about contracting. Payments is all on your side and we give you advice on how to kind of interact that. But because of how many different softwares there are and the fact that we don't take a commission, we don't touch the payment. So there's no commission within that nine pounds a month. There's also no additional charges. So as I said, you can have as many members of your commission, um, your committee on the platform as you want. Um, and the reason for that is we've all used software in our times and, and particularly at Snap, where if you have five people on your account and then you want to add a sixth person, you have to buy another five seats to make sure that you only have one person and it's really cost ineffective. So we just made it completely free, if you will, but it's within that nine pounds a month, you can have as many people as you want. Um, and there's no minimum contract period. So there's two ways that you could pay on Snap. You can pay a one-off yearly sum, and obviously that would then mean that you've paid for a year. But using that nine pound a month model, which is what most people on the Snap use, nine pounds a month, it's on a 28 day rolling contract. So you might get to the 27th day and decide that you, you don't wanna go forward with Snap and you can cancel, which we obviously hope is not the case, but you can. So um, it's nine pounds a month, no commission, no additional charges and a monthly rolling contract. Um, well, we're all here tonight because of London FA um, and obviously we've partnered with them. And one of the benefits of you hearing about Snap through a partner like London FA is you actually get a discount. So Snap is now discounted for you using London FA's code, which I'm sure we can put in the chat, but it will be coming out via email as well after tonight um, in a follow up email that we'll send the recording over in as well. But it's, it's £8.25 using London FA's code. So it's 12 months to the price of 11. Um, and again, all of the same um, uh, all of the same T's and C's apply. So there's no commission, there's, there's no additional charges, and it's on a monthly running contract at £8.25 or 12 months to the price of 11. Callum, did we have any more questions? Did, did I see that it was an accidental, it was an accidental hand raise? No, but yeah, I think we, we'd, uh, we'd answer the question. Um, no, oh. nothing more from the chat, unless anyone else wants to raise a late hand or pop anything in. Otherwise, no. Oh, we do. Oh, we, yeah. we just had a hand raise there. No, it's just popped away. No worries. Um, so, guys, just give you like 30 seconds. And if there are no more questions, what I'll do is I'll hand back over to Aki and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up. But um, feel free to ask any more questions in the next sort of 20 seconds. But if not, Cool. Well, it doesn't look like there are any more coming through. So, Akia, can I hand back over to you just to do a little, little wrap up? Yeah, sure. No worries. Well, thank you, Will. Thank you, Callum. Um, I think that's been a really useful demonstration of how the Snap portal works. Um, and as they mentioned, if you do have any questions, Callum has put his email address in the chat. Um, or what I'll do at the end of this recording is I'll put my email also in the chat as well. Should you have any questions about Snap, Snap more than happy to answer those. And I can see um, Callum's just put the discount code in there as well. So, yeah, I think it's been a great evening and I won't want to take up too much of your time because can see the sun is still out so yeah if you have got any final questions just let us know otherwise uh yeah thank you for coming along and uh snap will be in touch with the recording and a little bit more um details yeah. about the portal just on that yeah we'll, we'll send out an email that will come from zoom actually so you've attended the, the webinar tonight so it'll send you an email tomorrow it will include the london fa um discount code it'll include this recording we'll also give this to london fa as well because we'll put it up on our video channel so you'll have it as a resource as well but um, no, we managed to, I think that's a record, managed to finish six minutes early so everyone can go have a beer or a glass of wine or something and enjoy the rest of the evening sun. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I, ho I hope there's no more questions, but if, if there's not, we'll just, we'll call that a night there. Um, and I'll kind of stay here for a couple more minutes just to make sure there are no other questions, but thank you very much. Thanks, Akia. Thanks, London FA for um, organising this. And thank you, everyone, for attending, including Douglas, of course, who gave a, a review for us tonight. So thank you very much, everyone.